First, the bad news. SAP Business AI won't generate amusing holiday cards, but it will personalize career paths for your people and let you know which suppliers are best so you can be ready for the next opportunity. Revolutionary technology, real-world results. That's SAP Business AI. I'm Inc. Executive Editor Diana Ransom, and you are listening to Inc. Uncensored. Today's episode, Couples Counseling. A few years back, my husband and I nearly started a bone broth business together. So I had gotten him a 16-quart stock pot for his birthday, and we were going around to farmer's markets and grocery stores and collecting chicken feet with abandon and making bone broth at home. And as we were doing it, enjoying the chicken noodle soup, we started to talk more and more about the health benefits of bone broth. It's good for your teeth, it's good for your nails, it's good for your skin. It's just generally really great for you. But yet, nobody really enjoys bone broth quite like that because it is so time-consuming to make. So we thought, why don't we develop a business around this? And so we went through all the efforts of starting to make a website, or we looked into the certifications and started to talk to other business owner friends that we had. And so he had one conversation with a friend of his, and the friend who was actually successful in the food business opened his eyes to the amount of work that would take to actually make this company a success and how much marketing it would require. And then we realized, okay, we actually just like making bone broth. We don't necessarily want to have a bone broth business. But in retrospect, even though I had some apprehensions, I thought we'd make a really good team. For some couples, working together could end up being a living nightmare. So this is the topic of our episode today, working with your spouse. Inc. Editor-in-Chief Scott Omleonik and I talked to a couple who have been working together for 15 years, and it's only strengthened their marriage. I'm Melissa Benishai, CEO and co-founder of Baked by Melissa. And her husband. I'm Adi Benishai. I'm the director of technology and innovation at Baked by Melissa. In this conversation, we talked about how Adi and Melissa met, started working together, and fell in love, not necessarily in that order. You'll hear Melissa's thoughts on setting boundaries, how Adi balances parenting duties, and you'll hear what made Scott say this. I think, Diane, I'm learning that I'm, I might be a difficult person. I started the conversation the way most conversations about relationships start. I asked Melissa how she and Adi met. I was sitting at the bar, 24 years old, freaking out, thinking who's going to stop at this hole in the wall and buy cupcakes they've never heard of. And this man sitting next to me was bartending at the cafe. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, David Z, who owned a chain of sneaker stores at the time, was a regular character, kind of, like your friend's dad who takes it too far sometimes. And he looked at the bartender and he said, Adi, who is this beautiful girl? And Adi said, This is going to be my wife. <laughs> well, as corny as it sounds, like I was bartending at Barry Cafe for a couple of months, and I never saw Melissa before. Meanwhile, she was working at the basement for a couple of weeks now. Doing my baking. I was baking, baking from the basement of cupcakes, Cafe Making cupcakes, prepping for the big opening. And the day of the opening, I happened to be working a shift on the bar with this guy, uh, David. And all of a sudden, Melissa comes up from downstairs, and she has uh, fresh highlights in her curly hair, like all makeup, ready to rock, really. As one does when one's baking. <laughs> well, it was opening yeah. day. I oh, had, okay, I... okay, okay. And it was just like such a refreshing person coming into the bar, and I look at her up and down, and I'm like, well, she's definitely going to be my wife. <laughs> oh, Adi, are you usually that bold? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, I was just going to say, maybe uh, he was okay, then, yeah. but not anymore. <laughs> yeah. So clearly you wanted to marry Melissa, Adi, <laughs> but um, what compelled you to want to work with her? We had no idea what we were doing at the time, and it took about three or four months of really getting to know each other behind the bar booths situation kind of thing. He would feed working. me shots when I was <laughs> baking, actually, yeah. is how well. I lived at Cafe Barry. I was baking like 14 hours a day, seven days a week, running my business from the basement of this cafe. And I had co-founders, four of them, actually, one of which my older brother they were doing other things for the business and support, but I was really running production and local deliveries and, you know, hiring the people who would work in the booth. And he one day was like, can I try icing a cupcake? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he could. 
And apparently there's an art to ice yeah, a cupcake. Yeah, you could either like ice a cupcake or you can't. Like it's somebody who's naturally athletic for somebody who like isn't, <laughs> I guess. Are you disdainful of people at like the school bake sale <laughs> when you see what they bring? No, I love all baked okay. goods. And I have a special place in my heart for like, you know, the homemade. Okay. But wait, you forget the good part. You got me fired. I, I got you. Oh, got no. me fired he got from himself the cafe. fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, he did. He he got fired because uh, for a lot of reasons, but probably because like he was flirting with the bite sized cupcake girl. Yeah. A lot. But anyway, he did get fired. So and Adi needed a job. He could ice cupcakes. And my brother happened to be in Colorado for the weekend at a wedding. And he's like, let me help you. I could help you. So I said, okay, great. Go do, take deliveries. And he started delivering cupcakes, like using the subway, like we were doing. And then he started helping me with all these little like odds and ends operationally in the basement of Cafe Barry. And then he started icing cupcakes with me. And there was a period of time when we first founded the company for two years, we iced every cupcake we sold. We fell in love icing cupcakes. I um, love the smile on your face right now. Our, our first, first Valentine's yeah, Day. Our first Valentine's um, Day together. At the end of the day, she was really upset that I didn't get her anything for <laughs> Valentine's Day. And I'm like looking at her like, really? I just iced a thousand cupcakes <laughs> with tiny little hearts on them. And you're saying I didn't give you anything? <laughs> like the whole day, it was probably he like spent the after whole, yeah. a 16 or 17 hour show on Valentine's Day together. <laughs> so you held that against him for a while? No, of course not. <laughs> I, I actually don't know how to hold a grudge. It's one of my superpowers. That's true. So Valentine's Day is actually the biggest day of the year, right? It sure is. Yes, it was then and it is now and it's so fun. <laughs> and we don't celebrate Valentine's Day oh, you as don't? a result. <laughs> well, actually, my daughter's birthday is on Valentine's Day, so it's now become Joplin Day yeah. um, in my household. So that's a little bit about me. So you're, you're starting this company. It's a grind, your icing cupcakes for 14 hours a day, baking and icing them. How do you stay sane? How do you keep it together? Or how did you then and how do you now? I think he was my sanity, actually, because you could really only have one top priority, right? And at the time for me, it was baked by Melissa. And I had the opportunity to do what I love every day. I was going to do everything and anything I could to make that happen. But I also got to fall in love like yeah. truly in the process and all of these incredible things that... It was all very exciting. Like the company was new. Our relationship was new. Job is new. Requirement is new. Figuring out like improvements and logistics and yeah. how to be better at everything. So it was a constant challenge and new thing. And it was never boring. We were fairly busy. Like, yeah, it was all, all the my time. Energy. There was always something to do. I had a lot of friends before Baked by Melissa. I had less after just because, you know, I didn't have time. A couple of friends who I would keep in touch with would come to the basement, like turn over a milk crate and talk to my back. So we got to experience the really cool things together too, like bringing cupcakes to the backstage of the Victoria's Secret fashion show or like movie premieres and meeting the celebrities who would come by the booth and check it out. And then the hard days weren't because of him, they were because of other things. So having him there by my side was sanity. This all sounds so lovely. It does. But I have to, I, like, I can't believe it was all as blissful as you're talking about, as sweet as a hmm? Monster Mash cupcake or whatever you're <laughs> selling at the moment. And it's got to be some friction somewhere that you guys had, even if it weren't, you know, because of each other, just like oh, spillover yeah. from other yeah. things. We have friction all the time, you know, as anyone who right, is talk about in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Tell much, us about the hard stuff. Yeah, we can identify with that so much more than the love story. Well, I, I feel like the, the hard stuff is is just, I mean, as anyone could attest to, like relationships in life are probably one of the most challenging parts of life. And I had four co-founders. I was dating my coworker. There was a lot of love and passion because if you're a founder of a business, you care very much. And yeah, I think there's like challenging situation at the workplace, regardless who you work with and what's the relationship. But but I think I think like one was, of the biggest challenges for us as a couple while we were working together. So we did all the baking out of the basement of Cafe Barry. We had that one retail location. And then we opened our second retail location and decided to move our baking to a bigger space so we could continue to bake in one location and distribute to our stores from there. We still bake there today. 
just a bigger version of it. And the two of us were tasked with training the team of people to produce our product. It was definitely challenging at times, I think, when we would disagree. I, the truth is I don't remember like any big blow up fights between the two of us, but I that was the time where we recognized we needed to have structure in mm-hmm. the way that we work together. There were one-off things like he wanted to do something one way, I wanted to do it another way. And half the time, maybe more than half the time, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Just we'll do it your is way. It, is that true, Adi? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I mean, just, just checking, just fact checking. Um, we also did product development together. So We still do. We still do, actually. Still do. So every flavor baked by Melissa Cupcake, I conceptualize and create and he makes it. Yum. And so we are so privileged to work alongside our vice president and chief of staff at Baked by Melissa, who was like the second or third hire, like around the time Adi started working at Baked by Melissa too. I call her the yin to my yang. And <laughs> she very quickly was like, all right, we're going to put structure behind like product development. And she put a timeline together, who's accountable for what. And I think that's the reason we are married today. Oh my gosh. So what are the boundaries? You clearly knew you needed to set them. What are they now? Um, Well, we just have very clear responsibilities within the process. And so I actually conceptualize with Sam and my product team, and then we pass it over to a D and I'm not the one communicating directly with him. And a D reports directly into our CFO and COO at Big by Melissa. Like I am not managing my husband. That would be crazy <laughs> mm-hmm. and terrible yeah. and it would just not work. I was about to say limiting our professional communication and keeping it more personal definitely help us as a couple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you do at home? Like how do you do you make a, a rule like saying no work talk at home that kind of thing? So I th- uh, maybe our kids do. I don't know. <laughs> I think like at home we're talking about work. Uh, to some degree, but not that much. And it, it just like, in a lot of ways, it helps that we both work with the same people and we know the dynamic of the same people. So it helps kind of like understand whether if I had a great day or like a bad day, right? So in that regards, it's it does help. And when he works late, because like lately there have been a few projects where he's working around the clock and yeah. it's annoying because I don't have my helper like when we're cleaning up dinner mm-hmm. or like putting the girls to sleep. But I understand because it's like for me too, you know, and that's just something that I really appreciate. More recently, I'm like, oh, my God. I can't even imagine if he worked somewhere else and had to work late and I didn't understand it, I would be so pissed. Right. Uh, My husband went to Montreal for four days and I almost lost it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But but there's the flip side of that too, right? So you guys were together like 24-7 before the pandemic. I think a lot of people when the pandemic happened, like I know that I love my family very much despite the challenges I have with them, but during the pandemic... I thought maybe I actually don't love them this much. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Because there was so much concentrated time together. So, for the two of you, was that like it, an easier transition? Yeah. When we first started dating, I, I like, I think we spent like, we've always been together 24 7, but it was very easy and, and nice. Our kids were very young and we just knew how lucky we were to. As hard as it was, because it was hard, whether like he made our third bedroom his office, which now he has his own room in our three bedroom apartment. I don't know how he got so lucky, (laughs) Um, but it's because, you know, closed doors when we're on calls and things like that. But it was probably a much easier adjustment for us than most because we are used to sitting next to each other for 14 hours and icing cupcakes. Also pre-pandemic, I used to work exclusively out of our commissary area. Uh, So I used to be there really like long hours and most of the day while she's being in the office. So all of a sudden we had that time home and I realized quickly that I can do my job from home, that I don't need to be physically present at the bakery because honestly, we just had an awesome opportunity to have like great team and just like delegate. And then you are in the bakery when you need to be, but it's not like every day. Yeah, not every day. But having that time as a family, it was some some sort of a fresh change because we weren't as home before that. Uh, Melissa was coming back at like six and seven, eight p.m. at a time, uh, missing bedtime. (laughs) I couldn't I couldn't have I don't know how I did it. Like as a mom of young children, like I was 
There's a picture, I guess I took a selfie laying on the floor, like with my kids in a D, like when they got home from something and I'm like dead, you know, like I was so tired and exhausted at the end of every day. So it was a very welcome change to have. I mean, COVID was terrible, but it allowed more. And we had time. help. I think like having a babysitter at home while we're trying to work definitely yeah. helped to keep our right. kids busy and uh, not like daddy, 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 daddy. Like <laughs> we were in the very middle privileged. of a meeting or something. We were very creative and solution oriented through COVID. It was like not as much of a privilege, but when daycare closed, we're daycare people. Like we called the owner of the daycare, like who's looking for a job? We had somebody who worked at the daycare. When camp was canceled, we called the owner of the camp. Who do you have? that lives where we live. So like, this is a very entrepreneurial thing, yeah. right? Like the problem solving you just carried over to your personal yeah, life. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I and I'm very positive and optimistic and I think like there are definitely challenges. I mean, oh my God, we had one of those mornings this morning where like none of us are okay. Everybody's crying. <laughs> <laughs> like getting everyone out the door this morning. It was not okay. I'm like, great, let's go do an interview and have a t- talk about how much we love yeah. each other. But but like, that's just, it's my focus is usually on like, what's good. So you have this structure, you have different responsibilities. Are there other things that you have to keep in mind as you go through your day, like the, in the give and take where you bend yes. and oh my God, so you today don't break? Even. Yeah, every day. And this week is actually really a weird week for us because our babysitter can't work a couple of days, but our kids are also in school and like old enough where they don't need to be watched all the time. Adi said he was going to pick up our kids for one o'clock dismissal because his parent teacher conferences. And but I was like, I can't. great, but he can't. He told me this <laughs> I morning, just we're this morning that teeth. I can't. <laughs> so you're going to leave him there. Yeah. So I'm going to. And that's how the day <laughs> So I'm going to move, but like... I, no, so I'll move my 1 p.m. to start at 1 30, which is okay. It's internal. I'll go pick them up and then the babysitter will come a little later and whatever. So I think like that kind of where I think we're both more open and flexible with each other because it's we're on the same team at work and at home. No, but a lot of parents, especially, right, like because they're under their individual like column of pressure above them from whatever it is, can quickly become resentful just of the fact that their partner has something else to do, right? right? Like, so, so that just doesn't happen for you guys? No, it doesn't happen. During COVID, <laughs> it's, he's like very special. Like, I'm a hands-on dad. He, like, he's, and I a, love- he's a hands-on dad. During COVID, I was doing virtual baking demos where like I would get hired to like, you know, do a baking demo, I guess, for a group of people. And there would be like a film crew that would come to our house and set up and he and our two children would need to leave. And those were like their favorite nights when that would happen. <laughs> he would take them and like he would make activities out of like they would go to the drive through and then drive on the street with all the Halloween decorations. What did what did Scotty call it the other day? Let's go for a Halloween stroll, yeah. which is Aww. in the car. And like they would like go to sleep in our bed. You can't resent somebody who does that much, right? I but- think we both keep each other in check. Like, I would be at times, Melissa, get off your phone. But you're like, come be here. We're, like, we're or, not talking about that. Or, uh, we're talking about how great you are, not what Melissa <laughs> <laughs> needs to get off her phone. Enjoy the moment, Adi. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> well, you're, I mean, obviously Adi is great, but it is a give and take, right? So you can't resent him, but then sometimes I wonder, do you resent her? You know, do you resent the business? Because the business takes up so much time, and how do you handle that? So, a- again, I think it just, like, checks and balances. She keeps me very much in check, and this I'm very trying diplomatic to... answer. But I get so much attention. <laughs> Uh, and I get so much attention and praise for Baked by Melissa. And you work really hard, too. And well, on I top of it, you it have way. to deal with, like, a lot of the stuff with the kids. Yeah, I guess, like, I don't know. <laughs> Resenting the business, not so much. Like, I love my job and I love being challenged at my job. And as far as, like, you know, life, business kind of, like, thing happening, um, Melissa is, like, very much keeping us on our toe. Like, calendars, like, time. I'm our project manager. Like, even though I she, should she never knows be a product everything manager. and everything. <laughs> like, I can ask her five times a day, when do I need to pick up the girls today? And yeah. she was like, <laughs> giving me a look as she is right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we just make it work. And uh, I think it's... But I get what you're saying. And I think that, like, Adi didn't grow up here. And 
our family, like we are like very like tight knit, the four of us. And he so genuinely like loves being with the girls. But so do you. Totally. Yeah. I, and we love being with each other. But I think the way it is with Baked by Melissa is not the way it is when we're home, the four of us, like at all. It, it's much more like, like we are partners in running our house. And he, every night when dinner is done, he he gets on his hands and knees and he cleans oh, the floor. She, it's no! Not. <laughs> wow. Yes. yes. You, be, you better be nights. baking this Some man cupcakes every day. Well, I but I'm loading the dishes and he's taking all of the plates off the table, but I am actually doing the rest. She, so then she's he's laying on the couch so and I'm much. still there, like, um, you know, dishwashing. No, who, who and cleaning. did the cooking? Who did the cooking? Ooh, me. Okay. Oh. He cooks a lot. He does. But whenever he cooks dinner for everyone, like somebody is unhappy. Somebody's not happy. Either <laughs> Scotty like or whole Lenny. Thing. Right. You have um, a five and, and seven like, year old. And then it's I get going frustrated. I'm like, see, oh my God. Like, why can't you have everything ready on time? Or like, she doesn't like the eggs that way. Don't you know? Like there's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I just do it. I think it all boils down to having that support system. Yeah, you know, like definitely. And and Melissa's really like on her toes from 5 a.m. Like, four. yeah. 4 a.m., uh, getting the girls ready, like getting lunch, getting them dressed, like out the door. Except in for time. this morning, by the way, which is what caused all the chaos. This was his morning to take the girls to school. <laughs> and he couldn't handle it. He buckled under the pressure and it became. I needed to do it. It was a morning for everybody. Everybody was crying. That's what like, breaks us. Really? It's, it's our children who we love more than anything in this world. But when we get them done and, you know, five and seven, those are, you know, they still need your help. And they could also tell you that you sucked, you know? <laughs> like this morning, they're like, oh, I hate this family. Like, like, <laughs> so you really don't hold a grudge, Melissa, because like I would have... I'd still be festering and not smiling at my partner right now if, if if I had the morning that you described. Well, it's not the first time we've had that type of morning. I did you say have I'm sorry. To, you have to learn to <laughs> like swim in the ocean, I guess. Yeah. There are big waves. Yeah, I know. I am special. I'm t I told you it's my superpower. I, I think, Diane, I'm learning that I'm, I might be a difficult person. <laughs> Oh, you probably are. I think it's a man thing, maybe. Just Could kidding. Be. Oh, wow. <laughs> you don't have to blame, like, paint him with that brush either. It can just be a Scott thing. I said, might be the I'm problem. The, you know, I'm easy. So, so I have a, a question. Diane is going to try and keep us on track, but I, I'm, I'm going to keep interrupting. Inc. does a retreat every year with a handful of founders uh, in Mexico for a week. And we had this one moment where the CEO, COO, spouses of a company sort of had this realization that the company could not continue growing at the very successful rate it was growing huh. if both of them continued to work at the company. They were just butting heads too much, getting in each other's way too much. And one of them decided that they would step down. At the retreat. At the retreat, they decided that it's a it's a really special retreat, by the way. And we can talk about that later that we do every year. I believe they sing Kumbaya. And we don't sing hands. Kumbaya. But it it's, sounds it's, very much it's, like that. It's pretty remarkable. They were like, you know, digging deep within their souls. And... Yeah, it totally happens, right? But one of them decided to step down because they had this realization that the company would not go as far with both of them working together as with one of them working apart. Have you ever thought about either of you sort of leaving more active management or your more active roles in the company? No, I mean- Absolutely not. My goal is to work. I have like two full-time jobs plus being a mom because I've like created this like social media presence over the past three years. And I'm like trying to be everything for everyone. So I do work towards having more time and being able to pick my kids up from school school every now and then. That's the dream. And I think it's like a very healthy thing to work towards. But on the contrary, I almost feel like I've thought like, oh my God, like what if we both didn't work at Bake by Melissa? Because it is a great connection point for us, I think. And we only know each other. I met him the day we opened our first store. So our relationship solely exists in a parallel world to bake my muscle. That being said, like if whatever happened and one of us, like I'm not insecure in like our marriage, but I, I like it. Like I wouldn't want it to end. Can we just go back to that first day for one second? Cause we never, yeah. I, I want to know when he said that is going to be my wife one day. Douche. Uh, what, what is, is that what you thought? <laughs> yeah. 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 But at the same time, I actually, like we were talking about this yesterday and yesterday is the first time I admit it. I think when somebody tells you you're going to be their wife, it 
feels good deep yeah. down. First, the bad news. SAP Business AI won't help you generate cubist versions of your family's holiday photos. But it will help you understand which supplier is best to help you roll out your plant-based packaging in Southeast Asia. Or identify the training your junior project manager needs to rise up the ranks. And automate repetitive tasks while you focus on big innovations. So you can be ready for the next opportunity. Revolutionary technology. Real-world results. That's SAP Business AI. Yeah. I mean, like how many people had ever said that to me before? None. Nobody said that to me since. It's, it feels good. It only good. took one, I guess. It took, you know, maybe I was like, you know, that like run down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, I did think that it was like a douchey thing to say, I guess. But I also, it felt like a compliment. And then just the way I felt when I would see him was a very nice feeling. At one point, did you like make it legit? Okay, so actually, I remember, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I remember telling my brother, like, it's not like I'm going to marry him, you know, like, <laughs> like I, you know, and then Mix that. <laughs> and then um, I would like look at, there was an office upstairs at Cafe Barry, I would like go when they would post the schedule for the next two weeks, the first thing I would do is like, look for a D's name and when he is he going to be there? Because I would look forward to obviously when he was there. Would you um, change the schedule so you'd work together? <laughs> uh, no, I never did that. But I was very close with the manager of the cafe and yeah. Yeah, but like he told me he was I was going to be his wife and he would like flirt with me and stuff. But there were like a couple of things that happened here and there. But like, you know, he wasn't like making his move. And it's like a little more complicated. We don't have to get into those (laughs) details. But one day I was just like, are you just going to flirt with me? Or like, I I remember we were on the stairs of Cafe Barry. Like, you know how they had those stairs? Yeah. And this is a perfect example. I was like, if I need to get get over you, (laughs) I will get over you. Or you can tell me that you like me. And then, but like, this is not cool for me. And that was when we started to be boyfriend and girlfriend. But there was no like, you be my girlfriend because then remember those right. customers on the street were like is that your boyfriend and we were like i don't know like, <laughs> you know like, are you my boyfriend which i feel like everyone has that moment <laughs> does uh david z know you all are married today yes. and oh and yeah uh, takes we full actually credit saw for him a couple of years back at a restaurant in Upper East Side. Yeah. And he was like so amazed to see us together and knowing that we have kids together now. It was, it was <laughs> they were magical times when we met, like I think our age, but also the world is a different place today than it was then. Like, I guess, especially past COVID. The company that we built and the way there were lines of people like wrapped around the corner on Spring Street waiting to buy these bite-sized cupcakes. And it was just fun. And I feel like at some point you and I spoke in the past about how important it was to basically feel like you have that support system. And I hadn't met you yet, Adi, but it is very clear that you offer a great deal of support to Melissa and, you know, the Big Bang Melissa Empire. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and he also calls me out on my shit. So how do you do that? Like, how do you give her that support? And how do you how do you recommend other sort of spouses of entrepreneurs step up in a way like this? Well, obviously, she's my wife, so I Mm -hmm. love her. I think it's important to make sure that she's confident with everything that she does. Uh, And she does do a great job. And most of the time she got the right idea and the right uh, mindset. And she just need like a little bit like push and reinforcement. Or you tell me when I don't do a good job. Or (laughs) not. Which is helpful too. Sure. But like outside of like even work, like what do you do to make me feel supported? I know. I mean. I know. I I could answer. Sure. Answer. (laughs) A, like, I think a lot of women today who have full-time jobs, I think it's impossible. Like, if you have a spouse that is also working late hours and and really just like, no, it's like your job to like, like, that's very difficult. He's not like that. And I think that in and of itself is incredibly supportive. Like, on the nights when I'm working late or just really busy, he gets dinner ready and it's more of just an understood thing. I'm the morning parent and he's the nighttime parent. Like when the kids were younger, like he would do bath time. Mm -hmm. And even still, he like reads to them and makes most of the time. I feel like as they're getting older, I'm more needed at nighttime too. And if I'm having a hard time, I'm not allowed to get away with it. Like, there's no excuse for being a... For neither of us. I mean, come on. We we really need to like be the best. Right, but like, so like, if I'm like, like, I'm not allowed to sulk. 
Like if I'm upset, or like I'm still held accountable for that, like that's everything. my happy place. <laughs> I don't so know okay. how you're not allowed to sweat that. I need no, to like that. it's not okay, like in a good way. And then he like says the things that maybe I don't want to hear in the moment, but are mm-hmm. correct. Have you guys ever needed uh, to seek outside help? You know, someone to help you mediate couples a counseling. problem, couples counseling, anything like that. <laughs> yeah, but not because <laughs> <laughs> not because of us. <laughs> <laughs> like more in just like how to transition from being a two-person family. Like when our second was born, also, you know, there's a lot of love in families. You have like in-laws and Everyone's in-laws. giving you <laughs> <friend dynamics>. unsolicited <laughs> yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, which I, I think it's it's really important to do that. I still talk to somebody and I my goal is to just get another perspective and be told that I'm wrong because that's pushes me outside of my comfort zone and that helps me to be a better person. We had this one couple for a package that we did where they had a rule where they wouldn't argue in front of either their children or their employees. So they described this uh, scenario where they had an office space and it was all open floor plan and windows everywhere. So the only room where they could have an argument privately was in the bathroom. So they'd literally have to go into the bathroom to have an argument. And then they'd come out and, you know, basically have had this very deep conversation, but everyone would really know what just happened in the bathroom. Yeah, We're not like that. Yeah. Like, how <laughs> do you... We're very much like what you see is what you get. Yeah. But, but how do you manage presumptions even, right or wrong, with employees or other people? Right? Who I don't know. Do you favor him over no, I other think it's people? The opposite no, no. Like, over. Like, you, I'm no, not, you may I'm not. Harder I'm saying you him. may not, but I, I I think employees might think that, right? Or or folks who don't actually know the dynamic might make presumptions about your relationship. So to me, when you're in a relationship as, as coworkers, it's not just managing your own relationship, especially yes, if you're the boss, the but managing your relationship with the rest of the team. For sure. I think maybe like in the early days, cause like we've been doing this for 15 years, basically. I think it was my brother was the our CEO in mm-hmm. those early days and both of our boss for all intents and purposes. And I think there was definitely no perception that there was favoritism going on. <laughs> yeah, it was the opposite. I had to work twice as hard. And, uh, and we both did, actually. Um, People like saw that. And I think it's kind of the fabric of Baked by Melissa, too. If somebody on our team would have heard you ask us that question, they'd just like be like, <laughs> <'Cause>, like <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> if anything, it's like I'm harder on him than most or anyone else. So your brother was CEO for about eight years. And then you had another CEO come in. He was sort of outside of the family Mm -hmm. um, continuum there. And then this person had to leave rather abruptly. There was a change of hands. You had to become CEO in 2019, pretty much like overnight. Yes. So our previous CEO He was our CEO for three years. He started in September 2016 and at a time when we absolutely like welcomed him. He was great, really taught me a lot, actually, really empowered me. He used to tell me like, oh, you could be an exec. I needed like a little confidence, I think. My brother was also a great leader, but he was also my big brother. So that the the dynamic was just different. So the CEO before I became CEO was really a very close friend of mine and and a very welcome partner. And then and yes, he couldn't be our CEO anymore. And it happened in one day. And that was December 5th, 2019, right before our busiest time of year. No, it was our busiest. It was, yes, it's our Super Bowl. It's crazy. And um, my board just was like, okay, yeah, so Melissa's going to be CEO. It was a board call, <laughs> like an emergency board meeting, 6 p.m. on December 5th. And I never wanted to be CEO. I didn't think I was capable of being CEO. And I remember like being on this call in our bedroom and Adil is like like right there and I mouth to him I like, was ready for bed at the time <laughs> <laughs> like they're making me CEO and I was like very emotional and he's like that's great great like yeah it's exciting I mean it's a new opportunity but it's also well deserved like no Absolutely. nobody else should have been CEO but you and he saw that yes he did and yes. I didn't at all to the point that I was interviewing I made myself like interim CEO. Okay, like I'm going to go out and find our next CEO. And I, everyone I interviewed would end the conversation by being like, you are going yeah. to be the next. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, you are the They would company. convince you to be the CEO. That's yeah. great. 
Yeah, it was definitely a, a confidence thing, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure he does that in other ways, too. It's the confidence building. It's the ability to know that you can you can do the things. You can climb the mountain. Yes, for sure. It's great to, like, have each other, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah, she does that for me as well. Between calling out each other or support each other or help with whatever needed is really what makes it. And I think uh, the Melissa calling out is more important than anything. We just, like the support. Is good. Yeah. How did how did things change between you professionally, personally, after you became CEO, if at all? I'm not sure. At that time, I was already kind of like carving a path, like to report to the COO instead of like the CEO. So like, I think the dynamics started changing gradually. He wasn't he, didn't, he wasn't on our team yet. I don't yeah. I don't remember, but oh yeah, you right, you were working with the COO at COO, the time. COO, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for as long as I can remember, I really, we really kind of like thrive in an environment where we're working, where we should be working and making the greatest impact and not necessarily crossing those lines with each other. But I think if anything, like my confidence and my like security in my role and like the leadership of the company, it, it really is and was the best thing for the company at the time. So I think if anything, it just like made his job easier and there was less like bullshit to deal with because you play favorites now no. <laughs> <laughs> so i so i, I have a, a confession since we're, we're talking about being censored so it's like not secret but my my own marriage is in rough shape for a reason that a therapist i saw a long time ago said and i thought she was a total crackpot and that was the two of you don't know how to argue. You don't know how to fight. And that's going to be a real problem one day. And I think both of us dismissed it. My wife and I both dismissed it because like, we don't fight. We get along perfectly fine, right? <laughs> until like, until we didn't, right? And so I really want to know like, how how do we fight? How do you fight? <laughs> oh, yeah. we fight. And how we do you do? Do, do you? We like, do. like, let's hear, I, I would like I, to hear I that. Like, I need both, this lesson personally. Well, I think we're both just like a little bit like, children when we fight yeah. like there it's it's uncensored we just <laughs> and we we also both have like different responses to different things yes uh, that's so, fair it's never both of us heated at the same uh, time right i can hold a grudge at a time and melissa would say hey, like i'm sorry and i'm sorry and like sometimes i just need like you know my time with my thoughts to figure out what i want to do or what i think about a certain situation and i just need that little little extra time, even though that she feels that I'm like super upset with her or it seems like it. And no, you are. And Melissa can be just like, I don't know, a little edgy uh, <laughs> for a couple of days and just like stress about things uh, that coming or not. And we're just trying, we, we do argue. But I, I actually, we do argue. And like, even this morning, like our five-year-old was like really pushing it. She broke him and then he got upset with me. And that is what happened. And I understand. Yes. And it could have easily been me. And so like, he had a moment where he could have spoken a little nicer to me, but like, I understand it for what it was and it could have been me too. But I think over the years, we've learned how to fight with each other. And I think for us, what that has meant is just not to let it ruin the day or like, like you have that moment of weakness and maybe you're both saying things or acting in a way that is not okay, but we don't have to punish ourselves for it after, right. you know, like, and you, you did, you do hold more of a grudge than me, but I feel like there was a time where you hold, held more of a grudge than you hold today. Yeah. It's the, well, you definitely help with that. And and you kind of like constantly coming and trying to make it better definitely helps. Uh, it just like, I've for learned me, patience. I just mm -hmm. need some time sometimes, depending he needs on time. what He needs time. And then I, so I learned to like shut the hell up and like not <laughs> yell back and like just listen. And then when he's ready and he comes and he says, sorry, then I'm like, ah! <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know right. like then I'm like, okay, well, this is all the things that you did, and this is why it's not acceptable. And thank you for your apology. Let's continue on. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I think it just like, especially near the kids, even if we get into an argument, mm -hmm. like we try not to let it affect the day or ruin an event or something like that. And at the end of the day, when we both lay in bed, that's the time when we can 
clear some time and like really talk about that and set an expectation for next time maybe. We've been doing that like more recently. And I think that's definitely helps. Yes, but we're not the people who we we do sometimes go to sleep angry. <laughs> it's, it's better than what I've done. So. <laughs> What's one piece of advice that you would share with other entrepreneurs who are looking to start up with a you know a spouse or loved one? Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. No, I don't know. I we're, we are not partners in the business, and I quite honestly. Well, like, you you were you started it basically to get the same time together, and yeah. But I think that like if we went in and started it together as equals. It would have been different dynamic. It would have been a totally different dynamic. So I think the advice I would give is just to clearly establish the role of each individual and what they're going to be responsible for, held accountable for, and what they're going to have a say in because I think where the overlap happens is where it gets tricky. And Adi? Uh, I don't know. To me, I think it's diving in together to the same goal without knowing what to expect was kind of like the magic, I guess, and figuring out together until we realized what should be like each doing and what should be each responsible was part of everything. But I think all in all, just like working together really made in my life as much as Melissa's life. And I don't know, I think we are partners in a lot of ways, like not just like professionally, personally, like in life, in life. Yeah, Yeah. of course. (laughs) It's also probably to some degree trust. It's about trust, Trust. like knowing that you have that person and you trust them implicitly with your children, with your business, with the business, like everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's very well said. And I think trust is hard to find when you're hiring it. You know, it takes time to build. Right. So you might as well just hire your yeah. And spouse. somebody actually, I somebody had told my brother when we first started the business or years ago who worked with his wife, like, it's great because you get to experience the wins together and the challenges together. And I think if you keep that mentality and try not to sweat the small stuff, it's good. Okay. Well, thank you both so much for joining our podcast. That's all for today's episode of Inc. Uncensored. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Also, if you liked this episode or have suggestions of what topics you'd like to hear about, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Or reach out to us on Inc.'s social channels on LinkedIn, Instagram, and the app formerly known as Twitter. Inc. Uncensored is produced by Julia Shu, Blake Odom, and Avery Miles. Mix and sound design by Nicholas Torres. Our executive producer is Josh Christensen. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.